Hello friend, thanks for joining me for another book chat. Today let's spend some time with Strange Life of Ivan Osokin by P.D. Ospensky. This book was originally published back in 1915 in Russia. It is sort of a spiritualist uh, novel. P.D. Ospensky was a noted spiritualist of that era and I believe this is his only novel. I wanted to read it because it was mentioned in the book The Secret Teachers of the Western World that I read a while back and chatted here on my channel, which I will link to that chat down below. And it was also mentioned in the recently read book of Nightmare Alley. The author was mentioned, not this particular book. And so I had seen references to this author and just wanted to give this a read. Strange Life of Ivan Osokin by P.D. Ospensky. So what is this about? It's, it's basically about the philosophical concept of the eternal recurrence. Eternal recurrence means basically, I, from what I gather, is that, you know, our life is, time is, is sort of a circle. It's a all time is always present, so um, our life continues to repeat itself over and over and over again. And so that's sort of where I think that this book is coming from. The book opens with this young man, Ivan Asokin. He is seeing off his uh, sweetheart, this woman that he's, this young woman that he's in love with, at a train station. She is on her way to the Crimea for an extended trip and she is literally begging him to go and he won't go though because he doesn't have any money. He hasn't been a success in really anything he's done financially. He's made a lot of mistakes he thinks and so he's dressed shabbily. He thinks he cannot go to the Crimea under, these situation, under this situation. So he does promise her that he will join her uh, down in the Crimea uh, eventually You know when he's able to. He, of course, he doesn't do this, though. And so some time goes by, so I think several months go by, and then he hears that this young woman is going to marry another person, and then he plunges himself into, that plunges him into despair. He begins to sort of reflect on all the mistakes he's made in his life, all the, pla all the places he took a wrong turn with his education, starting out with, with his money, um the different decisions he's made that he could have made a, another decision he thinks and had a better outcome and wound up being able to say yes to this trip and then he, he in fact being able to marry this love of his life Zenaida. So he's despairing and considering suicide. He puts this revolver in his pocket but before he takes that drastic step he decides to go and visit the magician. So he discusses all this with the magician. Then he, he asks the magician, you know, would it be possible to send me back in time uh, where I wouldn't make all these same mistakes over again? And the magician says, yes, it is possible to send you back in time, but you will do everything exactly the same. And Ivan Osokin says, I will not. I will make different decisions. I will apply myself with my studies and with my work and I will become successful. I know where I went wrong and I will do things differently. And the magician's like, you won't, but I can do it. So the decision is made to send him back. He wants to go back to the time he's 14 years old and he's in this boys boarding school because he was not successful there as originally in the first time around. And so uh, he thinks he will do things differently. So the magician agrees to do this. And then suddenly uh, Ahsokan finds himself 14 years old again. Um, and he's at this boys boarding school. Now he can remember the fact that he was an adult. He can remember the future. So the, his future has now, his present now has become his future but in a sense, it's also his past. Because if you're in the present and you're remembering something that's already happened to you, that's your past. So this book really sort of mixes up past, present, and future as far as how we view it you know, from our, our point of view. So then the book takes us through then his life from 14 years old up until the time of this meeting with Zenaida at the train station. And to, we can see and he, he basically lives the same life that, that he did previously. 
Um, all right, so some thoughts and impressions. Um, this whole idea about if we knew what you know, a lot of think a lot of times we think, you know, if I could only go back in time, I would I would make a different decision. I would do things differently. And there's a quote here I think that sort of illustrates this that I think is really cool. And the quote is the whole trouble, this is this is Ahsoka talking to the magician. The whole trouble is that we never know for certain what is coming. If we knew definitely what would be the result of our actions, do you suppose we should do all that we do? You always know, says the old man, looking at Ahsoka. A man may not know what will happen as a result of other people's actions or as the result of unknown causes, but he always knows all possible results of his own actions. So, you know, I've given this some thought, like, in a way, you kind of do, right? You kind of know once you make a decision, you kind of have an idea of, of what the outcomes, what you expect the outcome is going to be. Um, but I thought that was, that was really interesting. And it's really interesting sort of thought experiment. So, and then this idea of our past is our present, um, and our future is our past, and, you know, this sort of mixing of past, present, and future in a person's perspective if they were sent back in time, uh, finding themselves maybe a 14-year-old boy with your current memories, um, how all that would, would sort of play out. And there's an analogy that is in the book that Ahsoka sort of reflects on that I think might, might explain it a little bit, so I'll just read that quote. Um, and that quote is, I am like a man who, finding himself obliged to live in a distant province, tries to maintain an interconnection with the capital so as not to become provincial. He subscribes to the papers and magazines, which are really quite useless and even ludicrous in his provincial life, and he likes to think about things which perhaps had meaning in Moscow or Petersburg, but have no meaning at all where he is, where he is. So to me, that's like, you know, you're in the, the capital is this, your, fu your, your future, you know, when you were uh, in the future and then you're sent back sort of to, so you have this knowledge of where you have, you, you have been or where you will be, but yet you're in this provincial life. So it's not relevant to you in your present life. So he, this is a lesson he learns really right away when he's in this boys' school because he needs to navigate his life in the boys' school. And so, you know, he finds himself, though, sort of, uh, sort of reliving those same patterns that he did when he was originally in the boys' school. And I think one, one example of this is, um, or he talks about here, about how things actually happen to us. Um, that things don't just happen we don't make we don't make the decisions we think we are making we actually come to the decision little by little by little until when we get to the point of actually consciously needing to make a decision it's kind of already been made for us because we've taken these little steps there's a quote about that which i will read the whole trick is that nothing is done all at once Everything is done little by little. This is what I'm only just beginning to understand. So we don't make these decisions like we think we do. We make them in a much more protracted way. Well, we make them in incremental, little incremental unconscious steps. So I think I'll leave the chat with that. You know, this book was really interesting to read from the thought experiment standpoint of the eternal recurrence, what that actually would mean if that were true. Um, you know, we do know that time is not linear like we think it is, like we perceive it to be linear. We know that it is not that way. So um, whether or not we are reliving the same life over and over again, I don't really know, but it was really interesting to think of our present, you know, we really can only inhabit, I think, maybe is my key takeaway from this book. It seems like we can really only inhabit our present. So our present is where we're living right now. Our past be, seems dim and distant. And then if we know our future, if we knew what we were going to, was, was, was going to happen to us already, it would seem unreal, sort of like our past seems unreal. So I think if, you know, you're if you're if you went back in time your your our present right now would then become 
our not only our future but also our past and both would seem sort of unreal and there's a quote in the book that I meant to read about that so let me just grab that quote real quick and it says Ahsoka here is like it's talking about Ahsoka and, um, talking about his, his future slash past, he can no more be troubled by it than he can be troubled by some event of Roman history, meaning it doesn't seem real. So over time, Ahsoka really kind of like wonders, you know, was that even real? You know, it, because we can really only inhabit our present, I think is maybe the th main theme I'm taking away there. Okay, um, I will leave the chat there. Um, I also had this, I read this Kindle edition that was really um, not a good edition at all. This, this edition, I really had a lot of formatting issues. I think if you were wanting to read this book, I would suggest you not read the electronic edition that's available on Amazon anyway and look for another edition just because I don't, I would, also wasn't really confident in this translation either. Um, but anyway. Uh, Strange Life of Ivan Asokin. I'll leave it with that. My next chat is going to be Middlemarch by George Eliot. I have already finished this, so I should have a chat on it coming up very soon. Until next time, take care.